are live. Aman, thank you for being on the podcast. How's everything going over in London today? Uh, it's good. It was actually quite sunny this morning, which is a nice change. Yeah, I've been waking up every day. Like I told you the other day, there's jackhammer going outside. It's beautiful and sunny when I wake up. And then there's like, you just watch like 30 construction guys like walk over and they're like, yeah, let's start to work right here, right next to where this guy's sleeping. I had I had the same thing because uh, where I live, like the infrastructure is just a little, little crap. Um, so they were like painting, doing scaffolding and whatnot. Um, and for three months, literally like all I heard was drilling. Um, <laughs> and it's just like usually my place is like dead, dead silent. Um, and I guess you don't really appreciate it until you have something totally. different. Yeah, so, okay, so I got to get started with the first question. It's going to seem off base, but what is your favorite superhero? Here's the issue. I really, really just have no interest in, and I never have, like, in, yeah. like, comic books or, like, Marvel or this thing or that thing, but I guess if I had to say my favorite one, um, probably, does Iron Man count? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Iron Man. Okay, so that's perfect because the, okay, the reason I ask is normally I can get kind of a sense of how someone is based on who they like. So Iron Man is a, is a great one. So I kind of want to dive into, you know, the beginnings of your journey, what mm -hmm. you were kind of uh, going for until now, and then where you're trying to get to after. And uh, Iron Man's a great, uh, I think, um, goal, target, an idealized person to, I mean, he's got the intellect, he's got the wealth and he's got the girl also, he's got, you know, everything going for him. So yeah, well, let's dive into your story where everything started and then how you got to where you are today. All right. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, a little bit about my story. Uh, I actually grew up in a place called Dagestan in Russia. Um, so you, are you into like MMA at all? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you know where uh, Khabib's from? Yeah. So before I try to explain where I'm from and like, I would have literally like zero context to give people. I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm from this like, you know, place in like the South of Russia, blah, 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 blah whatever. But now because of Khabib, uh, I can basically just be like, okay, you know, where Khabib's from uh, like that region. Like, you know, those videos you see of him like fighting bears and in the like mountain, yep. like, that's actually like where I'm from. Um, like my biological father is same bloodline as him. Um, wow. So like, yeah, like, yeah. You know, that, that's basically where I'm from. You can imagine it. So uh, I lived there for the first three years of my life. Uh, and then my mom met my stepdad and my stepdad. So, you know, they started dating and whatnot. Um, and, you know, eventually he brought us over to London. So, you know, it was like this fairy tale, you know, my real, um, my real father was an alcoholic abusive. So, you know, I, I met him once. Sometimes I say I've never met him, but in actual truth, I met him once when I was nine years old, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, he wasn't really in the picture. Uh, so it was, it was this fairy tale, you know, where I come to London, you know, my mom meets this, you know, very well educated, very well mannered, charming man, um, successful businessman. Um, and, you know, I come to London, I get television, TV, I get more than nine channels. Uh, I get a, <laughs> you know, I get a toilet because in, in Russia it was, it's just literally like one of those, I think they're called like Turkish yeah. toilets or like that, where, you know, where it's basically just like a shacker. Um, so, you know, like I get on an airplane for the first time. So it's, you know, it really is like one of those fairy tale things um, until it wasn't, <laughs> you know, um, very, very quickly. Like, you know, I could tell probably by the time I was nine, 10, um, the things were, not super great between my parents um you know they always be like maybe kind of like on and off and whatnot even though they would always like live together and whatnot uh, but you know i'd say really i guess i kind of knew uh by the time i was like 13 or 14 um that it was 100 percent coming to an end uh, because at that time he cut us off so <laughs> um you know when we were 13 or I think yeah when I was like 13 or something he completely cut off my mom and when he cut off my mom he cut off me yeah um, so the weird thing is he was still paying for my school I was going to private school we lived in this expensive area in London even though 
you know, most of the year there was no hot water. Um, there was no, like the Wi-Fi was always on and off, you know, just the house like breaking, just totally breaking apart because it was super old. Um, and yeah, you know, the only way I kind of explain my uh, childhood is like I had a Rolls Royce, but no money to fill up petrol, you know, because like I was, go- I was technically, I lived in this super expensive house and even though it was breaking apart and whatnot, we couldn't f- afford to fix it, me and my mom. Uh, and technically I was going to private school, but it was like, it wasn't really worth much because there's no chance of how I was going to uni. So by the time I was like 14, I kind of knew that like, if I didn't do something, we were really, really screwed. Um, so from 14, I started my first like entrepreneurial ventures. And for me, it was almost like find a skill, learn it, sell it. Mm-hmm. You know, so my first couple of ventures were like, you know, one thing I did back in 2014 is I used to flip Instagram accounts. Right. So I'd buy an Instagram account, like rebrand it um, to something more general because then I could sell like sponsorship from like watch companies or chargers or this thing or that thing. Uh, And then I'd grow the following and then I'd sell it. So I did that. Uh, And then from there, that got super saturated. So from there, um, I'm like, oh, what's what's the next thing? So then I learned personal training or, you know, I spent a lot of time in the gym, way too much time in the gym. definitely more time than I had to. Uh, and, you know, I picked up all the books and at dinner with my friend's parents, because instead I went to a, a school where um, my friends were pretty wealthy. So, you know, when I was at, uh, when we were having dinner, um, I would just sell my friend's parents all my personal training services. <laughs> so then I did that. Um, but once again, I was juggling school and trying to have this personal training business. And I'm like, I need something where I can, I can get paid more by the hour. So I took all my money and I invested in a camera. And from there, I learned videography, photography, and that kind of was what led me into having a creative agency. Mm-hmm. And then having a creative agency is what led me into having more of what I have now, which is an online advertising agency. Totally. Wow, that's awesome. And then, so where, now with that, because that's, especially at 14, that's not something that most people do. At 14, I would say most people, let's see, Jewish kids get bar mitzvahed at 13, uh, and that's the entering into adulthood. But let me tell you, there's, you go to like, that's basically middle school just getting into high school. Mm-hmm. I would say the majority of people that I've talked to from that are there now with me now, I'm like, what well, can, can we relate on? And you're like, hey, sports are on the TV. I'm not yeah. a sports person because I just don't have the time for it, but I'm like, yeah, sports. Mm-hmm. doing things and I'm like yeah basketballs mm-hmm. I like it it's my favorite sport girls money they're like <laughs> rappers what rappers are popular now going from 14 into the entrepreneurial realm how did that feel because it seems as though you didn't really have any of that age has a limiting effect on anything mm-hmm. yeah so I mean the thing is you just choose why is he like the thing is if I was a lawyer um, and I was 18 um, yeah that'd be a huge disadvantage or if I was you know I think even something that's a little bit more serious for example um, if I had somehow managed to become like a chartered accountant at 18 mm-hmm. that's something a little bit more scary you know most people are like oh I would never trust an 18 year old <laughs> my books or I would never trust an 18 year old with legal advice but there's this weird you know, there's this weird conception about advertising, social media, stuff like that. they're like, oh yeah, you know, you're young. So of course you know about advertising and social media and whatnot. And I guess that's kind of one of the cool things about having an agency or at least a marketing agency is it's like, you know, it could be advertising agency, SEO agency, uh, creative agency. Like if you're old, it's an advantage. If you're young, it's an advantage. Cause if you're old, they're like, oh, awesome. He's experienced and he knows about social media. Whereas if you're young or, you know, social media, advertising, whatever, you know, everything that falls under that online marketing branch. Whereas if you're young, they're like, oh, awesome. He's young. Of course he knows about uh, (laughs) online marketing. So, you know, you really like, you can't lose either way. Whereas, you know, the thing is like, I definitely wouldn't have been able to do what I've done in a different industry, such as, as I said, if I was like, I don't know, doing accounting or, or, you know, just consulting, you know, large nine figure businesses on capital allocation or like, totally. you know, or mergers or stuff like that, you know, like you can't really get away with uh, you yeah. know, age is definitely a, a real stigma there. Whereas in the online marketing space, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something, I mean, I'm really big into uh, 
never talking about age, never bringing it up because you can just see almost immediately how people are like, oh, you're this. And it's like, mm. no, I'm still the thing you were talking to a second ago, but mm. now you have like a preconception, like I was saying, of what I think 14 year olds are like, and mm. that, like mirror into your life. Mm. Is that something yeah. like, yeah, that you encounter a lot? Ish, but a lot of time it would be like, oh my God, that's so sick. Like, you know, it would actually be more of a hook point. Hell yeah. You know, it, um, a lot of time it would actually be more of a hook point. And also the thing is, it's like, you know, I'm, you know, my girlfriend always jokes with me that she says like, I'm a seven year old, 75 year old living in like a 19, you know, I'm 19, I just turned 19, uh, in a 19 year old, uh, 19 year old years old body. Um, you know, so the thing is, like, people don't care about age because the thing is, I am older than 99% of the population because I've been through way more stress. I've been through way more life experience. I've been through, like, you know, I, I've, I've educated myself and I've filled myself with that wisdom where it's like I'm not 19, 100%. <laughs> totally. you know? So when, when you talk to someone, someone doesn't think about your age. Someone someone feels you out yeah. right and if you the thing is if you're 17 and you know you're starting an online marketing agency and they feel like you're a 17 year old then you're not going to get anywhere but you know most people doesn't matter if you're 16 17 18 um i've seen super super successful 16 17 18 year olds making you know 10 20 30k a month yeah. because they're not 16 years old. you know they're, they don't act like they're 16. <laughs> so you know yeah. ages it's just a number yeah yeah totally yeah I, I try to operate more in uh i these three concepts of time that i like to use which is this chronological time which is kind of just bs because everyone thinks that's the main thing then mm. there's biological time which is just like how are your cells aiding mitochondria the functioning and then there's experiential time which is like the experience of your life how those added up into the time mm. created mm. and so experiential biological are the two ones that actually mean something whereas chronological is just kind of like a yardstick and measuring the earth. It's like, it mm, doesn't really work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know that the, the goal though, the goal that you have is one that I'm also very passionate about, but I wanted you to kind of go into the next uh, steps in the evolution of Amon and what you're, you're going to achieve because it is a, a massive goal. Uh, and it's something that, definitely is needed in today's uh, society. Yeah. So uh, right, you know, right, right behind this, the, this screen right now, we're behind this tab. There reads my desktop that says I'm on a mission to reform the education system by building the best e-learning platform in the world. So the thing is, I can tell you honestly, like, you know, that's my mission. That's my goal. That's what gets me excited. But that, benefits me the least out of anything possible mm -hmm. like i'm i always have conversations with my personal trainer where i tell my personal trainer you know so i have i have my marketing agency ig uh, ig media so you're i think you're wearing an aura ring right yeah yeah so you know for example that's one of our clients um you know so we we represent some really really cool e-commerce and info product businesses um, and you know, the agency does pretty well, like $45,000 a month profit with one employee. Yeah. Um, and obviously like no offices, no, like, you know, just so lean and efficient, you know? Um, and the thing is the agency, I spend maybe two to three hours a week on the agency mm. and it does $45,000 a month profit. Um, you know, I have one team meeting on a Tuesday at 6 30, I think it is. Um, and it's 30 minutes and another 90 minutes a week is sometimes I do have to reply to Slack or talk to Danny or whatever. Um, so that thing is $45,000 a month profit with one employee. And then my other business, which is worryagency.com, we recently bought the, that domain, rebranded. Um, you know, that's my education company. The thing is the education company, I work maybe 60 hours a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I work 60 hours a week. There's, you know, three employees plus tons of, you know, softwares and service providers and this thing and that thing. And the funny thing is at the moment, profit wise, you know, I'm at a point right now where I'm really trying to scale from so bring on a new team, mm -hmm. uh, spending a lot on advertising, you know, really trying to grow, um, you know, this program that I've built that's just producing just ridiculous results. Mm -hmm. um, and the funny thing is my agency is way more profitable than my training business. You know, obviously training business is way higher revenue, but 
I'm barely like right now I'm breaking even because of all this new mm. team I've had to bring on board and all this new developments we've made. Um, so I talk to my personal trainer all the time. I'm like, honestly, Billy, sometimes I just think I should have my agency just, you know, cause I'm doing 45 K a month for like two hours of work. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, you know what, Billy, I should just work maybe two hours a day, Monday to Friday, do 10 hours a week, scale it to like hundred K a month and just fuck off. <laughs> go to Bali and just drink pina coladas like any normal human would. But I am, you know, just the way I've always been, I'm just so, like, I just, I can't do that. Okay. You know, because I'm 19. Last year, I was very, very blessed to have made my first million dollars profit. Um, it's, at this point, it's kind of like, by the time I hit 23 or 24, like, I'll know I'll have, I'll be in the 10, 20, 30 million, probably even, you know, 40, 50 million a year. Totally. So it's just like, how many watches do you want to buy? Like how many cars do you want to buy? So I need a goal that is literally, I can never attain. Mm -hmm. you know, I need something that's just so big for me to chip away at because otherwise I'm going to turn into, you know, most of these yeah. stars and whatnot that just like, they get everything they could ever want and wish for, which I'm kind of at that stage right now where I have everything I could ever wish for. Um, and they just kind of go a bit crazy. Oh, yeah. But I, like I work myself to the bone because of that training company. Um, and I bring on so much extra stress and, you know, so much extra expenses and stuff like that because of that training company. But, you know, at the end of the day, as I said, like if I didn't have that training company, I'd just have my agency, which really is a sensible thing for me to do. Um, you know, with the agency, I could just, you know, you can live a pretty good life for 45 K a month. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I could have my good life, but I know the thing is like, just because I'm a little, I'm a little psycho like that. Like I just really need to hammer away at something. Um, I know I just personally would never be filled. Totally. I mean, dude, it's, it's the hero's journey, almost like verbatim. You're like, ah, this, the shiny toys over here. And I could just stay and live like with the sirens and go off and never do anything. And you're like, mm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> the really hard thing that I know is going to suck for a minute, but then ultimately be a way more fulfilling reward in the long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, when it comes to changing the education system and it's literally layered in everything. So whether that's like the medical system, I mean, we have people who just follow the regular education system and now they're in the medical system and then we're supposed to give them the trust, even though like from an outside perspective, like I dropped out of college um, to go join a startup to start to learn all the marketing stuff. And I see, I'm like, I know these people, I know who's going through the traditional medical route, the traditional, whatever route, they don't question anything. They're not looking to see how can I make something better? Is this half, does this actually work when I'm giving someone? They're just like, the job's done four o'clock. Okay. I'm going home. Yeah. Clock out. <laughs> It, it becomes, man, like a society of people that were put into the wrong system right at the beginning. And so education, if you can give someone that, you give someone the ability to learn how to learn, you change literally everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, in our society, we're always looking for, you know, solutions to problems or, or cures, but then we never look at like, what's the actual stem of the problem? Like, can we just fix the stem of the problem and then we won't have a problem and then there'll be nothing to cure you know yeah. and i'm sure you know there's no better case of that than you know the the medical industry um you know pharmaceutical drugs whatnot um but you know the thing is like you will never need pharmaceutical drugs if you can give someone the right education on how to manage themselves because the thing is most people know how to manage their health they just don't know how to manage themselves you know, they don't know how to actually, you know, manage their discipline, their routines, their habits, um, and literally just like make life as easy as possible. Like just optimize the hell out of everything. So you don't even have the temptation there. Yeah. I mean, so obviously I know you're, you're big into uh, your biohacking. Uh, you know, you're, you're the reason I have a human charger in the drawer, in the drawer back there. But you know what I mean? It's like, once you optimize a lot of this stuff, um, it's just, yeah, once you optimize a lot of the stuff, there's just no yeah. reason, 
there's no reason to do, you know, I'm, tr- I'm trying to find my words here, but like, you know, when you, when you just put all the right systems in place in your life, then you just end up doing the right thing. Yep. But if you don't stop and you don't find a way to systemize your life, then of course you're always going to make the wrong decision because you have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In the medical industry, man, there's, I have just, I probably have like hours and hours of layered thoughts on like how that industry needs to just completely change and why none of it, like I'm afraid for AI if it's going to be diagnosing people because of the fact that who was the person who had the foundational information, where did that come from? And has mm-hmm. anybody double checked that? Like most studies can't be repeated. It just becomes like this whole thing where it's like, what's going on here? Well, are we moving too fast without actually like looking at our feet to realize that like we're walking in quicksand? What's going on? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it becomes a whole thing, but yeah, on the biohacking optimization, creating those systems, how are you putting that into play in uh, everything you do? I know you have the hue light right there and you just talked mm-hmm. about the human charger, mm-hmm. but. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, like I take my health, just, you know, I just take like everything to another level. Like, honestly, you don't need to be as like psycho as me or like, for example, I know you enjoy optimizing everything. So you don't need to be obviously as psycho as us, but you know, for me, a couple of things, like, first of all, I have a, I have a personal trainer that shows up at my house Monday to Friday, every single morning He's at my house at 645. I'll wake up at 630. So it's like, I don't have a choice whether I go to the gym. I don't have a choice whether I sleep in bed, you know, um, because he's just in my house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now, obviously, if you're just starting your business, you probably can't afford a personal trainer working with you full time. Uh, but, you know, a good workaround to that is just have a training partner. That yep. You guys know that you show up at the gym and you start working out at seven. And if you lay in bed, you're letting him down or her down. Right. So that's what I had before I had a personal trainer. I just had a training partner. I actually preferred working out on my own, but I knew that look, if they're there, I will not lie in bed because you know I'm letting them down. Yeah. So you know, that's an example. Um, these hue lights, like you mentioned, we were just talking right before here. Recently I just came back to London and I was actually gonna get an office because I've just brought on tons more um new staff, uh, contractors, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, and, you know, we're really trying to, trying to scale this year. Um, but I hired tons of new people in America. So now it doesn't make sense to get one in London. So I was pretty disappointed. Um, so what I did was I just, this used to be a bedroom and I have like a two bedroom. So I just turned this into an office. Hell yeah. so like, things like the hue lights, as you said, like right now it's kind of like blue just cause it looks cool. Uh, and most of the time I can't see what that looks like back there. Cause I'm just staring at my screen, but you know, as you said, like that turns bright, not bright red, like dark red. Um, and so does pretty much the entire house because dark red, that's like color temperature wise. That's like, um, I think it's like 1,800 Kelvin or something like that. Like basically like yeah. the lowest you can get. So like red is awesome for sleep. Um, if I look at other ways to optimize, like I'm not wearing mine right now because I actually broke mine. They're sending out another one, but like aura ring, obviously they're a client of mine. So I guess I'm a little bit biased, but uh, you know, aura ring, like, you just have to get one, um, you know, and then Billy, who's my personal trainer, he plugs in all of my aura ring stats into this health sheet that I created. And then it shows me my monthly averages. So then, you know, if I think back to, you know, maybe last month, I'm like, Oh, you know, last month I just know I didn't get much work done. Then I can look and see like, what were the weeks? Was I getting low sleep? Uh, and then I also have this thing called the muse meditation headband. So that's like an EEG reader and then that tracks my meditation and then that also goes in my health tracking sheet. Uh, so Billy does all of this stuff. He, you know, he has my Aura Ring account, my Muse account. So he just plugs those stuff in himself. The only thing that I need to plug in is my screen time. Mm. So I try to have an hour and a half screen time or less every day, like phone screen time. Totally. Uh, recently, I've gotten it down to as low as like 40 minutes. Um, because on my phone, I deleted Facebook, I deleted Instagram. Um, I just, yeah. And my phone, you know, so I actually have like, I I have two phones, like this phone. Um, I used to think having like two phones is super stupid. I do think it's really stupid if like both people are, if people are messaging you on both, but basically this one has like no, um, like no one knows my number or anything like that. So. With this one, it's literally just has Uber on it, Spotify, um, Muse, and that's pretty much it. And this one I use for like 17 hours of the day. 
Um, and then this one I use for like seven hours a day. So this one is the one where people can contact me. I have like Slack, WhatsApp, like people can message me, call me. So this one comes out of my vault at 1 p.m. And then it goes back into the vault at 9 p.m. And obviously it's shut off. So pretty much you can only reach me from like 1 to 9 p.m. every day. Unless you're an employee or a client, then you can reach me on Slack. But either way, I don't check my Slack in the morning. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. See, it's all about systems and optimization. And like, that's where, you know, at, at the beginning, it seems like a lot. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I have to do all this stuff. But like, then often the realization is not in, hey, if I'm not doing this, I'm doing something else. And mm -hmm. if I front load all this work, then everything becomes easier. Like, even learning, for instance, there's a, I don't know if you've heard of it, Halo Neuroscience. No. Um, so they have a, it's a transcranial neural stimulator. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like basically Bose headphones with an, uh, uh, it sends the transcranial neural stem. So like electrical stimuli to the, I forget which cord, I think it's occipital. No, it's not occipital, parietal. It's hitting the parietal, which primes your brain in 20 minutes. Uh, so that for the next hour you learn like crazy. So it takes like the 10,000 hour rule, cuts it down to like a thousand hours. Something like that can front load all of your learning. And then once you're learning more efficiently and you're learning things better, like it's these things that seem like they're going to cost a lot or take a lot of energy or do a lot at the beginning, like human charger, for instance. Oh, I don't want to pay 150, 250 bucks for a uh, light to put in my ear in the morning. Once you realize you get that extra 15 minutes daily, the exponential is just like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I said just, you know, for me also like just optimizing your entire house, like for me is like super important. Obviously, you know, I just came back to London. So I'm optimizing my, my house right now. Um, but like, for example, in my bedroom, there's just like, in my bedroom, there's like nothing distracting. There's no TV, there's no electronics, there's no like speakers, there's just literally nothing. I n I'm never in my bedroom, except for if I'm sleeping. Uh, in my bedroom, the only thing I have is like um, some book notes, like some clip notes. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the other thing I used to notice is, you know, now I've gone on my screen time super low, but between one and 9 p.m. when I did used to have my phone on, um, I know it's like, oh, you know, I go, everyone goes to the bathroom and, you know, what most people do when they go to the bathroom, you know, they, they, make, they make a proper, a proper event out of it. They spend like 20, 30 minutes, they scroll through their phone, stuff like that. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's put a Kindle in every single bathroom in my house. Mm. Um, so I just, you know, I bought the new Kindle Oasis, so my old Kindle, yeah. I just put it in there and they like sync up and stuff like that. So it always keeps up my latest page. Um, and then in every room I have a uh, incense holder. Yeah. Um, and just like, for example, like, as you said, the hue light system in my kitchen, because the first thing in the morning I wake up at six 30 and even at six 30, you're still a little like groggy sometimes. And, you know, you just need that things, you know? So I have a, one of those hue automatic sensors. So when I walk in, it gives me a little, like super bright, like, um, you know, it's like, 7,000 Kelvin or whatever, like basically like light, you know, the super like energizer light it's called, uh, and it just turns on automatically. And then from 6 PM, it gives me like super dim nightlight, you know? Um, so just optimizing all these little things. Like it took me a little while to figure out the hue system. Um, but once it's done, it's done. Um, and just like, as you said, like just, yeah, you know, even just things like the night before, just laying out all your clothes, like for me is just so, so important planning the day the you know, planning tomorrow takes 15 minutes, you know, but it gives you back an extra like four hours, you know, for me meditating in the morning, it takes 10 minutes, but it gives me back an extra like two, three hours, I'd say in, in efficiency. So, you know, also the thing is you, you need to understand that some of these things do indeed take time, but they give you back so much more time on the back end. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the feeling that you get, like, especially meditating, like clear peace of mind compared to like chaotic disorder of mind, even if you're getting, you know, 90% of the same amount done, it's the way and the thinking and that internal reality that is just totally going to change even what you think happened externally. Yeah. Yeah. Your entire it, perception will change. It, it becomes crazy. So 
I'm going to do a quick U-turn um, because I wanted to bring up since you have an advertising agency, you're showing people how to grow their agency. And I know you're pretty badass when it comes to Facebook ads, uh, analytics, getting all that set up. So I wanted to kind of dive into what is the Amon approach to, and uh, just a top level overview, of course, but to kind of utilizing these mediums for someone who's trying to grow their personal brand or their business uh, when it comes to um, Facebook ads and kind of like your methodology in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, so when they're trying to grow their personal brand, great question. So, you know, the thing is, so I, I said, I, I recently deleted my, I guess it's different if you have, for example, uh, agency because I've run ads in the past to an audit funnel. Now I have a case study funnel. So I've run ads before to get leads like purely cold. But to be honest, if, you know, as an agency owner, like I genuinely believe as an agency owner, if you're trying to become a coach consultant, um, I think the best way for, for me, I've always said like from zero to seven figures a year, mm -hmm. I think having a personal brand is the best way to get there. And by that, I mean tons of organic content, tons of YouTube, you know, Instagram, Instagram stories, email, this, and, you know, email still carries over from seven to eight figures, but, you know, a lot of like social media content marketing from zero to seven figures. And then what you do is you build up this entire lead list, you know, even if you just have someone visit your website, you know, who's organic, um, and then you just retarget them. It's super, super cheap and you get conversions for whatever you're selling. So let's say you're trying to generate a discovery call. You know, you get super cheap discovery call applicants or say you're trying to generate, um, you know, I don't know, a discovery call is, is I'm trying to think if you're an agency owner, or coach yeah. consultant, you know, or maybe you might have a, a program, you know, you're getting super cheap conversions for your online program. Like you're just building up this lead list organically free because the thing is like, I think when you first start, you never want to do something where you can risk leaving money. You know, that's why me personally, like, I don't ever think it's a good idea if you're new in business um, to get into like e-commerce and stuff like that. Cause you, yeah. you can make money, but you can also lose money. And I'm just going to be honest with you. Like I know tons of people who have very successful programs. Like I know most people lose money, yeah. you know, yep. whereas the thing is if you have, um, you know, if you're a coach, consultant, agency owner, you cannot get a client for like six months. It doesn't really matter. You know, as long as you're not pissing away Facebook ad uh, money on Facebook ads and Google ads, that's why you can build up that organic audience. You know, uh, you can build up that audience organically. You know, you can do all this cold outreach on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and send people to whatever it is that you're trying to sell or, you know, the main hub of that. So maybe that might be like, a, you know, your webinar in order to sell your program or maybe straight to your sales page because it's low ticket enough or, you know, uh, straight to your case study funnel as an agency owner, or maybe just even straight to your website as an agency owner. Yeah. Right. Um, and once someone hits your website as an agency or, or, you know, your, your agency website or someone hits your case study funnel for your agency, then you can just retarget them. And it's super, super cheap. Yeah. You don't need to spend much money and the results are crazy. The issue with that is it doesn't work that well. Well, it doesn't work that well at scale. There's scale issues with that. And when I say scale issues, I'm talking like, getting past like two, 300 K a month, which very few people, honestly, like I can tell you, you probably don't want to get past that because you're yeah. the quality of your life severely deteriorates in terms of relaxation and, mm -hmm. and you know, being able to just enjoy your life. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now, where I'm going from like seven figures to like eight figures this mm -hmm. year. Um, so I've had to kind of drop social media and not put as much focus towards that and just focus entirely on paid traffic. So I guess for most of your viewers, honestly, my best advice is do a bunch of content marketing, yep. uh, do a bunch of, and, and it, as I said, it depends on whether you're agency owner or, or consultant, mm -hmm. but do a bunch of content marketing, do a bunch of outreach, and then just learn the basics of Facebook and Google and just retarget people yeah. um, who have already shown interest because they're super cheap. You're going to get ridiculous results. And also the funny thing is like people honestly think you're like an advertising god or something because they see your ads everywhere. Like I've had... Like for example, my personal trainer's um, mom, like literally sent out a message, like does Eman own Facebook or something like that? Or like Eman, does Eman like own the internet? Because sometimes she'll see like my retargeting ads after she came to maybe like my agency case study funnel or, you know, my free training. Um, and then she'll get retargeted when on like alarm me or right move. Like literally when, <laughs> she, when she's looking for like, 
houses and apartments like it might have to come at the bottom because of like audience network so hell yeah yeah dude yeah i think um that's one of the things that people totally neglect especially yeah there's a certain point where you're like okay i gotta do a lot more focus on cold traffic and you realize that you've exhausted your remarketing audience frequency is getting high all that at that point you're like okay this is the shift normally yeah that's around a couple million a year uh mm -hmm. But in the meantime, creating those remarketing audiences and using something like remarketing on YouTube video watch, stuff like that, oh my God, they just murder it. But I, I love that approach. The zero to seven figures, don't go crazy with like, I'm blowing money, I'm doing all that. Just, mm -hmm. I, I saw a video online and now I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to like learn zero to seven figures, get your skill, become a master, become that person. Mm -hmm. Seven eight figures use what you created credibility wise and actual action wise to then scale yourself. I think that's definitely an awesome uh, play to it. So we've talked about a lot for everything from biohacking to your journey. And I, I kind of wanted to uh, ask you what your higher leverage skill is. So a higher leverage skill is something that you've used time and time again where you can kind of like pick it up and put it on something to learn so whether that's uh learning to learn um pattern recognition whatever the thing is that you think has really helped you get to where you are today that time and time again you're like this is a thing that i always use in order to get to the next step is there anything like that that you've you know had occur in your life yeah, hundred um, percent. Like honestly, for me, <clears throat> the biggest thing was uh, the biggest thing, and I've been known for this for like a couple years now. Is just building systems. Oh yeah. Like I literally like my I try to make it where my life is just like, you know, I, I try to make it where my life like I don't have to think about pretty much anything. Like everything is just done. I built a system around it. It's it's done automatically. I've got someone else doing it. This thing, that thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like just systemizing the hell out of my life and my business is really why um, I'd say I've gotten this far. Like even like I, you know, I changed the agency space for a lot of people because like, you know, I built these systems with an agency where people thought it was impossible before. Like even things like the onboarding process that myself and my students use, like most of the time you onboard the client. With my onboarding system, they onboard themselves. I don't have to be there. Yeah. It takes 90 minutes and by the end of it, They've paid the invoice, they've signed the contract, you know, and once again, it's an auto contract, so it works for all the clients, it's applicable for all the clients. They paid the invoice, signed the contract, um, they've given me access to their business manager and ads manager and all the assets and stuff like that. Yeah, they, they've given me access to their Dropbox or Google Drive and yeah. all the assets. They've given me access to all of the passwords. They've watched a 25 minute about what they can expect from us and what we expect from there in terms of their behavior. Um, like. Like literally that's done in 90 minutes and most agency owners take three or four weeks to do that. Yeah. And then they charge an onboarding fee. And then it's hilarious because then at the end of the month, they get fired and they yeah. wonder why. It's because you spent three weeks onboarding them when that, if you had just built a system, you could have onboarded them in 90 minutes. And the best part is you don't even have to do it. They do it themselves in their own time. Yep. You know? And you just use these beautiful things that exist like, um, you know, like um, uh, HelloSign and DocuSign and you use like, you know, Typeform and ClickFunnels. You just use these like systems and, you know, you can use things like Zapier to like even go to another level and you just use the power of like all this automation and stuff like that. And it just like makes your life so, so much easier. And just like building systems and streamlining, like just things with my agency, like most agency owners never think that they could get away with this sort of stuff. But I have some very, very like high ticket clients. And, you know, for example, you know, ordering that you're wearing right now, you yeah. know, they're pretty, pretty successful. Um, like we make them a lot, a lot of money. Um, <laughs> it's funny, actually now I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> you know, now they've maybe signed an NDA, but I guess you can watch some of my older videos. And, you know, you'll see them yeah. a lot, a lot of money. And the thing is we're, uh, you know, it's me and I have one employee and, um, you know, I have one employee and he lives out in Colombia. you know, oh, yeah. so I have me and one employee and, you know, we are a boutique agency. We're not fancy. We don't have big offices. We don't have, you know, senior executives and this thing and that thing. And look, ordering, they make a lot, a lot of money. They could go to some big, big agencies, 
yet instead they come to a small boutique agency like ours because I always say like we build systems, we're streamlined and we'll get you results. And if the thing, if you want something from us and it doesn't get you results, we won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, you know, even things like on the onboarding, I tell my clients, if you email me, um, if you email me, if you text me, if you call me, I will, I won't respond. And it's your fault. Like literally if you do anything except message me on Slack or message my team on Slack, you won't get a response. And it is your, like, it's your fault. Like you can expect that from us. Right. And having those boundaries and those systems and just knowing, just making everything so streamlined, you know, it means that you can focus on actually getting results rather than, you know, just being pushed, uh, you know, pulled in just so many different directions. Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah. Developing systems too. I mean, I've, sometimes we've been split tested our agency against other agencies, which I love to <laughs> see because it's just me and my partner who I, we live together too. And so like every day it was like, up, oh, okay, work up, oh, okay, work. And we're just like grinding all day. But it's hilarious to see because you see these massive agencies with these like, you're like, like there comes a point where we've been in enough business manager accounts where we start to see the same agency that we're <laughs> tested against. Uh -huh. And sometimes we do a week trial, two week trial, or we'll do like a lower month at the beginning before renegotiation. We'll make all the money that they're going to pay us the next month within the first week and be like, if you guys want to do this, it's ridiculous because the systems that the other people are using are so bad, so archaic and so removed from yeah. what someone actually wants is getting them from point A to B that they just look. So it, if your systems are faulty, everything in your life becomes faulty. Your habits are messed up. Your day structure is messed up. Everything that you do, how you think about yourself, mm -hmm. the systems in your mind are enforcing everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think that's a one sort of big limiting belief law people have about, you know, starting an uh, online marketing agency, as I said, whether you're doing SEO or you're doing creative stuff or advertising stuff, or if you're just doing, you know, captions and social media management, like I've done, except for SEO, I've done the creative stuff. I've done social media management captions. I've done, you know, funnel building. I've done advertising. Like I've, I've done, and, and, and most of this stuff is me, like all of these systems I have are come from me making the mistakes come from me being that guy who, you know, a year and a half ago, I would have a client where the deal was going to be worth 12,000 pounds a month. And I'm like, holy shit, I have to take this. So I'm going to offer a website, even though I never built a website before I'm going to do offer SEO because I've never, even though I've never offered SEO before, we're going to offer story creation. We're going to offer content management ads. We're going to manage this thing, this thing, oh, man. Add on this thing. And, this thing. and you think it's better. You think having more stuff in your life is good. You think taking more meetings is good. You think, you know, like, you, like to be honest, like we're doing a podcast right now. I pretty much never do podcasts. Right? Oh yeah. Well, thank you for being on. Well, my pleasure, you know, um, cause obviously I, you know, first thing I do, uh, is I look at someone's content. I loved your content. I love that recommendation about the human charger. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, you know, I, I have to get on this, uh, this guy's podcast, but, um, you know, the thing is like people think that more stuff is better when really less stuff and doing it right is the best way to go. Oh yeah. Dude, everything from the way that your room set up to what I've noticed the most computers, man, look at someone's computers and you can tell what's going on in that mind. Like yeah. I, I probably bi-weekly, I purge most things on my computer because like whether it's downloading like images for clients or whatever, like for ads and stuff, I'm like, okay, this is getting ridiculous, even when it's not. And then I look at some people's computer, I'm like, what is your desktop doing? Like you, I know you don't use more than like six things a day. Why mm -hmm. is your desktop like filled to the brim? And you're like, one sec, let me drag this file over to find that. <laughs> Do you use a Facebook feed eradicator? Yeah. Oh yeah. And then YouTube, I have one for YouTube too. Blocker. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not like YouTube BK blockers something like that. It yeah. blocks the comments, home recommendations, side comments. Yeah. You know, like the thing is, you know, I am, well, actually both of us, like we're the guys who take people's attention, bundle it up and sell it, you know, or, or I guess, no, we take yeah. Facebook. We, we go to Facebook, we buy or Facebook or Google or whatever ad platform. We take the attention they've bundled up and we buy it for our clients. Yeah. Right. For ads. So, you know, I, like all, I guess if you're, you're a good drug, uh, drug dealer or a drug dealer or a drug Lord or a kingpin doesn't actually use his own product. Yep. Kind of the same thing with me. Like 
yeah, I have an online advertising agency, but like there is no fucking way that I'm going to be sucked in by social media and, and dumb shit. So, you know, that's why you have to protect yourself by blocking your Facebook feed, by blocking your home recommendation, side recognition, comment. Like, I don't know if you ever use, there's tons of different versions of it, but like I use something called focus. So there's like a yeah. hard lock mode. So, you know, most of the day, like yeah. I can't access my email. I can't access like most sites. I can't access like YouTube, Facebook, this thing. Um, I can't access Spotify to even listen yeah. to like, is it like, oh, you know what? Maybe this is an easy task. Maybe I'll just listen to like standard music. No, I only have like three binary beat folder. I just click that, you know, because all of this is distraction. Like everyone wants your attention these days. So you just have to like, just, you know, just, you know, your attention and your focus is literally the most valuable thing you have. Um, so you just have to guard it with your life. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we call our company attention labs. Mm-hmm. So we're just, just taking attention, uh, on the binaural beats. If you haven't, I recommend this to everyone brain FM. Mm-hmm. And so is that like an app or something? Yeah, it's an app or it's desktop app. Uh, brain FM is like, uh, the work on the neural oscillations in your mind. So, uh, binaural right. beats, dude, it's, it's crazy. Binaural beats are supposed to have two different frequencies, which, you know, create a uh, balance in the middle of your brain. Mm-hmm. The way brain FM works is it's using AI sound technicians, nature sounds, and then, uh, like classical music and stuff to create these different neural oscillations. So actually getting like the spindles of your brain tuned into different things. So their nap one, if you take naps, I take naps. I'm like, I love naps. 15 to 30 minutes, it'll bring you into the nap and out of the nap without an alarm. Their focus one does like two, you do two to six hours and you like don't even know anything else is going on in the world. You're just like here, like doing whatever you're doing. Damn. It's uh, it's crazy. But okay, so with what we were just talking about, feed eradicator, focus, systems, is there anything that you're currently questioning right now in the world? And that can be like the way doorknobs work to politics, to anything that like day to day comes up. Um, I don't know. Good question. Um, I think one thing that like recently I just out of, out of the blue, like for example, like I forever, like literally forever. I, if I had a headache, I wouldn't even take paracetamol. Like I'm that sort of guy. Like, I, I refuse to take like, anything, yeah. any sort of ta- a tablet, anything like that. Um, and recently I was reading like Dave Asprey. Yeah. Um, I was reading Dave Asprey uh, and I came across modafinil. So I took some modafinil, you know, because like me, I literally will try any, like for example, like with, after I do ridiculous amounts of due diligence, which is why I've never done any of these other yeah. like smart drugs or this thing or that thing, where I don't even take like paracetamol. Like, I'm just like, yeah pure organic um so yeah i guess that's one that's like just recently i've started toying with um i personally just literally noticed a zero effect really um, yeah because like i guess because i'm so focused and optimized anyways like for me it's like you know i think like medaphone for a lot of people brings them back to baseline. what they should be you know to yeah to baseline focus for me it's just like i i, I don't know i just don't really feel an effect and funnily enough i had this thing with modafinil where i started to kind of feel i got a lot of anxiety and almost like depressed and i started to feel as though my thought pattern was what most people's thought pattern is like you know because i do a lot of like yeah I, I i do a lot of work when it comes to focus and even just 10 minutes of meditation a day like it's crazy what that'll do for you over extended periods of time but you know i started to get like worrisome about like things that I, like I know, like, for example, in my business, like cash flow and stuff like that, when I know that right now, like the last two months, revenue is, you know, at an awesome place, but I'm used to being so lean and so efficient where my, you know, my profits like at 150, $200,000 a month profit, um, where recently it's, you know, it's way below six figures because I have, I'm taking all my expenses, fattening up because I'm trying to grow this company and trying to bring on a new team and train them and bring in new equipment. I recently just spent 20,000 on this like new home office. Um, but you know, normally like in a normal head state, I would never worry about that. I'm like, Oh, awesome. This is like you scaling, um, or trying to grow a real like big company. Uh, whereas for some reason on Medafinal towards the end of the evening, I got super stressed and worried about it. Yeah, man. I, <laughs> I spent, 
I've done all probably every no tropic there is. Um, and I, a couple of my buddies actually were doing modafinil for probably a year. They would do it like every other day. I can't fuck with that shit, especially with sleep and everything. Like modafinil to me, I, I've read so many studies about it. I know it's fine for certain things. I just don't agree. Like I heard Tim Ferriss say one time a long time ago, there's no free lunch when it comes to that stuff. I love that. Yeah. And I'm like, hands on sold modafinil fucks my stomach up mm. and after a while after that initial high of like this is going on this is going on this is going on you're like oh why did i do this mm. the one thing that i've liked which is out there for most people is microdosing yeah. microdosing to me has been the one thing where it's like if i'm doing creative work or i know it's more of a day of like i get to build out things and really like go introspective into the business Hmm. microdosing has always been that thing where I'm like, hell yeah, just it's yeah. for it. That's interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, like I, I, gotta, I have to do that. I go. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, you never have to like do a full dose or anything, but like a little, like a little bit and you're like, okay, cool. Colors are more vibrant. Thinking's more productive. Mood's better. And I can break through those things where I was like, I need to figure this out. And then it's like, Oh no, this is it. And you're like, that's it. I knew it. Yeah. 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 So last question, is there anything that you're currently obsessed with besides changing uh, the way that people are learning? Um, team building and like culture. Um, I was always the kid at school where like, I just wouldn't work with anyone. Um, you know, like to be honest, I was really bad at school. So to be honest, if anyone had to work with me, it was more of like a downside to them. But I guess the only thing that I was kind of good at or I enjoyed, I hated like um, English, like literature, mm -hmm. like I guess like where you have to like study 17 different meanings when the person just yep. actually said that I don't like, but I used to like, like English, like writing and stuff like that. Um, or maybe like history and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't, I don't want to be that type of kid where like they'd be like, oh, work with this person. I'm like, why would I work with them? They're just going to take my answer, raise their hand, say it as their own, and then they get all the credit. And like, does that make sense to you? And they're like, work with them. I'm like, no. And then they're like, principal's <laughs> office. So I, I, I'm, I really am like a lone wolf. Like, you know, um, I'm just super comfortable being alone with myself. Um, if anyone else, until... Uh, very recently, I, unless anyone else, if anyone else was around me or working around me, I couldn't work. I had to be alone, like no distraction focus. Um, and, you know, now that I'm bringing on a team and, you know, my goal is no longer live an incredible lifestyle, you know, because uh, I said, if I want to just live my incredible lifestyle, I would just do my agency, not okay. stress myself out with this other, you know, nightmare that I'm building that I, you know, I love deep down, but, um, you know, you know, so because my goals changed from make crap ton of money and live my best quality life to like, I have so many years ahead of me. I'm so young that I have to chip away at something that's so big. Um, I have to build team, right? I have to build team. I have to build company culture. So I guess that's the thing that I've been very, very obsessed with recently is like, you know, how can I hire incredible people and keep them around? You know, um, when like, especially when it comes to like uh, digital marketers, you know, especially when it comes to the copywriters or uh, media buyers and stuff like that, it's getting very, very competitive now. Um, you know, because if you're a good copywriter, if you're a good media buyer, um, you know, if you're a good product manager, like there are big companies trying to poach you. Um, yeah. So yeah, you know, just building incredible team culture um, and also doing that remotely because I was looking forward to having an office. It doesn't make sense at the moment. Um, but, you know, building a great company culture when I'm not physically there, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So. Are there any resources for that you're exploring, like Jason Freed, any of his stuff? Or um, so, I mean, like I'm just looking at the best companies. So, for example, like uh, when I was in Bali, I read the you know good ones to read. For example, Elon Musk, uh, mm -hmm. his biography. Because the thing is, that the guy bootstrapped his way to making Tesla and SpaceX. Like SpaceX employees could have gotten way better paying jobs oh, yeah. at companies that were more established, but then they went to like freaking SpaceX, even though the company, everyone knew the company was going to go bankrupt so many times. Yep. Their pay was terrible. They got work to the bone, like, you know, and Elon was like a dick most of the time, but they stayed there because they just loved 
number one, like the decentralized model of it, the fact that like there really wasn't like a hierarchy, there's no, you know, I'm executive, so I say this, it's just like whoever's idea wins and they can prove it, they win. It doesn't matter if you're talking to Elon, if your idea works, right? And you actually have the best solution, he doesn't care, just as long as you can prove it. Yeah. So I, I realized, you know, so reading books like, you know, uh, his biography or look, reading the one with uh, Amazon, um, mm -hmm. so Jeff Bezos's or reading, there's a good one um, called uh, Powerful. Uh, so that's all about like Netflix. Oh, cool. um, this is, I think Netflix is like um, HR, old HR lady or something like that. Uh, she wrote she wrote a book. Um, and then another one is like Culture Code. Um, and then, yeah, those, I guess those are a couple that I've, I've, I've referred to recently. Uh, when it comes to books um and then apart from that also just been very interesting like talking to my own team yeah. you know because like I, I have a guy on my team now who's a product manager kieran he worked at times magazine their marketing subsidiary and he you know before i poached him he was at the top so he was managing four hundred thousand pounds a month in retainers wow. from clients like lg and stuff like that and they were one of those really shitty sluggish agencies you know the ones we were making fun of yeah. and he left them to go work for me and, you know, grow your agency and become the product manager. Um, so, you know, just learning about like why someone would like leave something like that, why someone didn't enjoy working at a, at a company like that. Um, and then the other guy at cash who, who works for me as well, he spent $200 million on ads. So I don't know anyone privately. I know some agencies that have spent more than that, but like privately, I don't know many other people. Um, so, you know, just, Look, you know, even just speaking to my my team and just being like, okay, what actually makes you excited to yep. work for a company, and and you know what, yeah, what just really makes you excited to work for a company? Um, so those four books, uh, there's probably a couple others I'm forgetting, and also, um, you know, just personally talking to my team and, and understanding why they left where they were working to come work with me. Dude, that's awesome. Now that's yeah, I love that. Yeah, two. Two, if you haven't checked them out, these are, I, I, I'm obsessed with uh, this one guy, Jason Freed, mm -hmm. uh, his company, Basecamp. Uh, yeah, Basecamp, yeah. Yeah, crazy. One of the only companies Jeff Bezos has ever invested in. And they've been profitable every year. They have no goals. They do 35 hour work weeks in the summer, or 30, yeah, 40 hour work weeks in the winter. They have like, it's completely opposite of almost everything you've ever seen in the company. It's called uh, Rework, he has. One book's Rework, one book's Remote, and the other book is uh, It Doesn't Have to Be Hard at Work. Mm. Um, and they're really good, they're super quick. And then uh, just anything from Automatic, Matt Mullenweg, the mm. creator of WordPress. Mm. His whole team of Automatic is 400 plus employees, all remote. Their hiring process is like, they get a Gmail, uh, you send in your, your Gmail, uh, they break it down. They see if you copy pasted anything. They look at the fonts you're using. They have like this whole like crazy system. Mm -hmm. Somehow it's working for 400 plus people, but yeah. it's, a, it's a crazy resource, but awesome, man. So before we sign off, where can people find you? Um, probably YouTube's the best place uh, to get started. Um, so it's uh, Iman, I-M-A-N, and then last name is G-A-D-Z-H-I, Iman Gaji. Um, Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was awesome, dude. My pleasure. Um.